It looks like we're all ready to go, everybody. Thank you all for joining us today for um, our refurbished hardware webinar. Today, the webinar's focus is going to be why refurbished hardware is the best choice for sustainability and, and savings. And we wanted to do this um, in conjunction with Earth Day because refurbished hardware is, is, is clearly the winner when it comes to giving back to Mother Nature, Mother Earth. And um, we really want to highlight, you know, the benefits of, of, of purchasing um, or, or requesting refurbished devices. So my name is Joseph Garcia. I am going to be your host today. I am actually a member of the hardware team, and I, am, I manage some of the, the other programs within our team, like the Mobile Beacon program, the Amazon Ring program, the Amazon Arc program. And I've also worked on the refurbished hardware team as well. So... I definitely understand this language. I understand, um, you know, what Kelly's trying to drive home with our nonprofits. So I'm very excited to be here and, I, I, and I'm very happy to be here with you all today. So today we would like everybody in this room to just engage with us. We would love to hear from you. That's why we did this, this introduction to, you know, just kind of get those juices flowing. So um, if you, we would like, we are going to do a Q&A question at the end of the um, presentation, but if you would like to just note that you do have a um, question, well, let me get my little laser pointer out. If you do have a question, we do have a Q&A tab at the top of your screen there. So just go ahead and click that, and then the Q&A feature will pop up. You can, you can input your question there. Also, I want to say, check your inbox. After this webinar, we're going to send you an email um we're going to send you an email reply with the slides and recent resource links that we're going to present on during this presentation and um, we should have that to you in the next couple of days i also want to note that closed captioning is available to turn on your closed captioning the button is located in your zoom menu and um, that will give you all all functions on all activities to go ahead and and use the closed captioning function. Okay, so here we go. Let's just dive into it. So welcome everybody. Um, I just wanna go ahead and just go around and just do some brief introductions. First, I would like to introduce, introduce um, Shasta Keating. They are the hardware director. Um, they have been here for about two years. They are such a breath of fresh air within the program. And we are seeing so many wonderful things happen in, in the hardware program here. I would all like to um, introduce our next speaker today, which is Kelly. Kelly is the a senior program manager for the refurbished hardware program. I've worked with Kelly for the past, I'm gonna say six years. Um, Kelly has been, Kelly is no stranger to the refurbished hardware world and um, you know, she's she's definitely a beacon of light when you need that information or you're looking looking to, you know, make some changes or, or looking to add um, a refurbished hardware to your offer or to your to your organization. I would like to in next introduce Chloe. Uh, Chloe is our refurbished hardware operations. I think that's that, oh, they're our manager, their refurbished hardware operations manager. They are handling all the ins and outs. And um, just like many of us, we work on many hardware teams. So Chloe is um, definitely a main pillar within our hardware team. And um, she's definitely holding up the refurbished hardware flag nice and high. So thank you, Chloe. We appreciate all that you do. And last but not least, I would like to go ahead and introduce um, Matt Young, who's the president of Electronics Value Recovery, one of our valued refurbished partners and industry experts. So thank you so much, Matt, for joining us today. And um, everybody, I just want to say again, we are going to do a little Q&A se uh, session at the end of this presentation. So get your questions ready. Like we have some really high senior people here that are very knowledgeable um, about the whole refurbished yeah. hardware world. So let's go ahead and just dive into our agenda for today. So today we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at the refurbished hardware program overview and highlights. Um, next, we're going to look at computers. After that, we're gonna look at sustain sustainability tidbits. And then we're gonna do a Q&A where we're gonna open up the table, we're gonna open up the room, the floor to everybody that's here. So if you do have any questions, burning questions, we're gonna be more than happy to answer them at that time. And then um, from there, we have a special drawing for one of you 
lucky um, participants, um, you will be walking away with a prize today. So um, let's go ahead and just dive right in. Kelly, I am passing it over to you. Here we go. Thank you, Joseph and everybody. Welcome. Um, I'm so happy you're here and you could take time from your day to to join us and hear about refurbished computers here at TechSoup. Um, I've been at TechSoup for uh, 15 years now, and I've been working on this program and thinking about refurbished computers for about that long. Um, and, um, and it's definitely a, a passion of mine and a great love. And um, I'm, I, I get, uh, I get, I get very happy when I get the opportunity to share it with people. So uh, with that being said, um, I want to start with um, a little history. So back in 2005, uh, Jim Lynch, who was one of the earliest TechSoup employees and also a dedicated environmentalist, saw a, pro a problem out there in the world, um, which was all of these computers going to landfills. He also saw a need for um, nonprofits who couldn't afford these really expensive computers, and he came up with the idea. Uh, his vision laid the foundation for a multi-million dollar marketplace that is thriving today. Uh, the TechSoup Refurbished Computer Initiative was the first marketplace to offer quality refurbished computers and by trusted refurbishers. Setting the standard for testing, cleaning, warranties, and support, the program continues to exceed marketplace standards to offer the best value to the nonprofit sector. On January 31st, a Dell Pentium 4 with 256 megabytes of RAM and a 32 gigabyte hard drive with Windows XP installed and a 90 day warranty was the first ever refurbished computer sold at TechSoup for $281. For context, today, for about that same amount of money, we have a Dell Optiplex 7040 with eight gigs of RAM and a 250 gigabyte solid state drive with Windows 10 Pro and a two-year warranty. It's such an incredible difference what two decades makes. <laughs> so, the growing demand for reuse has led us to an ever-expanding variety of refurbished electronics, from computers to power tools to kitchen appliances. Of course, we can't offer all these things through the TechSoup program, but we are always exploring options to not only access devices you can use in your office, but also items you can use if you're a remote employee or products your employees can use personally. Last year, for example, we expanded the program to include mobile devices, which include tablets, smartphones, and smartwatches, all of which are also, are also available to nonprofit employees as well as the nonprofits. This year, we are working on expanding the refurbished line even further, so keep an eye on the catalog. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so one part of my job on this program is to continue Jim's vision of bringing the most value to the sector. So I spend a lot of time thinking about two things. Who is it that is making the buying decisions and what is it they see as valuable? It can be a tough nut to crack since everyone sees value differently. So I started to think about how I buy for myself. I want the most and the best I can get out of my money, which I think is true for most of us. Since we sold the first computer back in 2006, we have distributed over 200,000 refurbished devices worldwide. And I have been thinking about the customer experience and what that value we bring since 2009. Over time, some of the ways we have improved the program and brought more value to the products and the sector have been things like centralized support, longer warranties, and closely tracking the quality to minimize the problems end users like you experience. 
While these things might not seem all that important at face value, I want you to take a moment to think about a time that you might have bought something from eBay and it didn't arrive cosmetically as you expected, or a time that you thought about buying something but couldn't find any information on the warranty or the return, or the return policy, or worse yet, you did buy something only to have it fail and you either couldn't find any way to contact support or the process was so cumbersome that it didn't seem worth the effort. Your time and energy is valuable and getting support for something you've purchased shouldn't be stressful, it should be easy. This is value in our eyes, which is why we make it easy for you, the buyer, to get the support you need and to get the returns process that you need if something should go wrong. We track the issues, we research, and we think about ways to make it easier and better for the customer. And we collaborate with our refurbishers and maintain transparent relationships, all to bring the sector the most value with their refurbished devices. So with all that being said, we're going to take a deeper look into the refurbishing process. My colleague and friend, Matt Young from Electronics Value Recovery is going to walk you through how EVR refurbishes computers, manages quality, data protection, and how the downstream when a device reaches end of life. Then he will talk a little bit about the impact using refurbished equipment and how it translates to other areas in our lives. Take it away, Matt. Thanks, Kelly. So, you know, our business, Electronics Value Recovery, we're an R2 and ISO 9001, among other certifi certifications uh, that we possess for our business. So when we are processing a computer that's going to be refurbished, Generally, it's going to be less than six years old, and we're going to run those devices through uh, about 125-point quality control inspection. So that's going to everything from are all the keys working, is the battery new and uh, able to hold at least 80% of the original charge, the speakers, the screen, uh, essentially every aspect we're either looking at manually or we have automated computer software that enables us to check to make sure that these devices are working properly. But on top of that, as part of our ISO 9001 certification, we measure a lot of statistical data about things like returns, the reason for a return, and we then develop a continuous improvement loop where if we're finding that we're having, say, a problem with the type of battery or uh, whatever it might be that's causing uh, statistical increase in how much uh, issues from our customers that we're hearing, or when we're doing our own internal quality control checks, if we're seeing things that kind of break from the norms that we're used to, that's then a good signal for us to investigate further. And then we try to fix that by fixing the root cause of all the processes. You know, as an electronics refurbisher, we deal with quite a number of different types of items that can come in and that's always changing. Things like Apple watches, we were not doing a couple of years ago. And then it, things like Chromebooks, you know, it's only been two or three years since we've really set up and scaled up our process as, you know, the types of materials that you as a consumer or a business or a nonprofit are seeing, you know, when they then come back, we're typically seeing those products five, six, seven years later. So we have a bit of a delay from whatever today's latest and greatest technology is. Uh, the other thing that's part of our process is in the event you did have something go wrong, you know, it, it does happen from time to time. If, if you're willing to take a replacement unit, we're going to put that through our quality control process a whole second time. You know, sometimes it can be little things that just you know, the stick of RAM got loose, caused the computer to not boot up when you got it, things like that that can happen when you're shipping sensitive devices, potentially hundreds of miles. But we'll make sure if there was an issue that the second machine's gonna come in, have an extra set of eyes be looking at it, making sure that you're getting that quality refurbished machine that you're expecting. 
And I'd say that refurbished electronics actually have a lower fallout rate than new electronics. You know, stuff goes through those kind of early years where they, uh, a lot of the things that could have been incorrectly done, a lot of the manufacturing defects kind of come out during those training wheel phases. And so you've, the, these devices have kind of been through that phase already. They're run through, you know, rigorous secondary inspections to make sure they're good as new from a functionality perspective. But um, that is why on refurbished devices, you will see lower and better returns percentages than new devices. Um, could we go to the next slide, please? And so, you know, uh, this was a tool that RHW had done. Um, and when you're refurbishing a device, extending that device's life cycle, it's significantly better for the environment than simply even recycling or, God forbid, landfilling, disposing of that. You know, uh, the whole reduce, reuse, recycle hierarchy, um, the EPA has put together some data that they call the warm standard that actually quantifies, and I believe that uh, when Kelly put these numbers together, she was using some warm based data. But so for every ton of electronics computers that you recycle, if it's recycled purely for commodity recovery of the steel, aluminum, precious metals, things like that inside, you're avoiding about two tons of carbon by recycling that product. By reusing that product and extending that life cycle, you're diverting as many as 21 or 22 tons of, tar of carbon. So it's quantifiably almost 10 times better for the environment to refurbish and reuse the device rather than strictly recycle that device. Um, this puts into some equivalencies over, I believe the last 17, 18 years. So I, lo I love statistics like this where by refurbishing and extending the life cycle of the many devices that TechSoup has sold, they've taken nearly 19,270 cars off the street for one year, which is a truly incredible amount. I mean, that's going to fill a football stadium's worth of people right there. Or the equivalent of treating of tree seedlings grown for 10 years, almost 1.4 million. These are really, truly incredible numbers when you consider the scale of what good for the environment is being done by purchased refurbished as opposed to new product that are gonna require materials to be mined or things like that. Um, Kelly, back to you. Hey, I just wanna add one, one quick little thing. Um, thank you, Matt, for that. Um, I, I have, um, I've been purchasing refurbished goods for a long time. Um, not just computers and electro like, uh, consumer electronics, but my first Vitamix, uh, blender was, was refurbished and, um, and it's just, it's truly incredible what kind of impact it makes, um, for, for the planet and, um, as an ever growing concern that, that we have, you know, with the environment and, um, you know, I live in California and, and the wildfires are definitely very real for, for me and, and everybody here in the state. And it's just truly amazing when I look at these numbers on, on the impact. So, uh, yeah. Yay. Refurbished. Um, <laughs> Chloe is going to share with us some uh, some information on what you can do as um, an individual and how you can uh, make some impact if you're interested in in making some uh, changes outside of refurbished uh, devices. Take it away, Chloe. Thank you. Um, can you please go to the next slide? Awesome, and I'm pinging in um, the different links to this slide in the chat if you do want to check them out. Um, and there is a lot of information out there about different ways you can make changes to positively affect the environment. And here are just a few to get you started. Um, more about the first article, it's a deeper dive into how to shop for refurbished electronics. Uh, this offers you some general information 
about the refurbished marketplace, insights into the key differences between used and refurbished electronics, and it also offers some tips on how to navigate the language, um, helping you to make more informed decisions when it comes to buying refurbished electronics. Uh, for the second link, uh, this is a bit on the older side, but it does offer some great tips on how to conserve from the office, whether that's from your home or downtown. Uh, many of the tips stand the test of time when it comes to saving energy and resources. Um, lastly, while there are many ways you can make a difference from using less plastic to putting solar panels on your rooftop, we are happy to provide you with a quick and easy way to make a difference. Uh, we now offer a web form that allows you to easily donate your laptop and mobile devices to TechSoup. So not only are you helping the environment and TechSoup, but you're also getting a free and safe way to dispose of that device that is no longer of any use to you. Um, TechSoup is partnering with refurbishers who will provide you with shipping labels and safely destroy your data, um, then give that device a second life, and you will be satisfied knowing that you have contributed to the circular economy and did a little more to help provide for a better future. Um, so yeah, definitely check out that link at the bottom. That's number three. Um, yeah, um, Joe, do you want to take it away? Thank you, Chloe. That was great. I love that. Um, yes, no, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Matt, for sharing your, your wisdom, your insight. Thank you, um, Kelly, for always, always looking towards refurbished hardware um, for the future. Uh, before we go into the q and I do want to just take a moment and give Shasta Keating just a couple moments just to speak to us um, about the refurbished or about the hardware program and and their vision with this program and where we're going. Thank you very much, Joseph. As always, um, at TechSoup, our concern is our CSOs, our nonprofits, um, frontliners. One of the things I love about TechSoup is that we are focused on the small nonprofits, the medium-sized nonprofits. And so it's just such a delight that almost 70 of you are here today. Um, it's just uh, refurbished hardware is really one of the reasons that I was attracted to TechSoup because it is such an authentically run program by Kelly Sullivan. It's been around for as long as I can remember. I sometimes say 15 and someone corrects me and says 20. And I think it is really coming up on um, multiple decades. So it's not a vogue thing. It's really been around. Uh, we have tons of expertise in refurbished hardware, which I am so grateful for. And it's just lovely to be a part. So thank you, Kelly, Joseph, Chloe, uh, and Matt, um, and all the refurbished partners that TechSoup enjoys. And really what's also unique about refurbished hardware on the broader sort of corporate relationship management team of hardware is that almost everybody has a connection. Actually, every single person has had a connection with yeah. this team. And so we're grateful to Kelly for, for really um, making the earth a priority for our entire team because we've all touched her team very deeply. So welcome and thank you for, for being here and being part of the journey and we're excited to have you. Thank you, Shasta, that was beautiful, thank you. All right, are there any questions? I see one in the chat uh, from Shane Bowman um, and I'm just gonna throw this out, jump in, one of our experts, if you will, but does all refurbished hardware from TechSoup come with a warranty? I can answer that question. Um, Shane, uh, yes, absolutely, 100%. Um, so everything in the catalog, first, um, the first layer is um, everything in the catalog has a 30-day um, re refund guarantee. So you can, you can order it, you can get it. If you hate it for whatever reason, or you changed your mind halfway through transit, you can return it and we're not going to ask any questions. We're going to just give you your money back. Um, yeah. After that 30 days has passed, um, 
All the products have warranties that range from 90 days to two years. So um, some devices like the, uh, the watches, the phones have shorter warranties. Um, the computers, however, all of the computers, laptops and desktops come with a two year warranty. And um, that is the longest warranty that's available out there in the marketplace. Um, again, speaking to that value add um, that we, we try to bring to the sector. And um, that, uh, that warranty will protect against um, any kind of um, failure that occurs, you know, through uh, hardware, you know, if your hard drive dies on you, that sort of thing. Thank you. And, you know, I could speak personally to this, but, um, you know, when I worked on the program, maybe about two, three years ago, we were at a year warranty for our computers and, and laptops. And um, this is something that was huge that Kelly really worked on was to really try to lock in that two year warranty for the nonprofits to have that extra protection and, you know, just that extra peace of mind. So, um, yeah, that's great work. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah, for sure. And, um, and, you know, and I really have to thank my, um, our refurbisher partners, Matt, um, and EVR included, um, because without them, we, we don't have a program without them. We don't have the quality products that we have. We don't have these warranties. Um, they, they really go the extra mile to support the program and to support the nonprofits that we serve. And um, and we have really fantastic um, relationships with all of them, and uh, they they work really hard for us as well. So they definitely deserve a huge round of applause for the work that they do for us. Uh, it's well. a great mission, and we're we're happy to be able to help and support it. So yeah, yeah. And um, I I know that there aren't any questions in the um, in the Q and A section, but I do want to address a couple of the things that that came up in uh, the earlier um, in the icebreaker. Um, uh, Prayer Chapel had mentioned that uh, they haven't ordered due to cost comparisons, and I I wanted to um, just kind of address that really quick. Um, I'm not I'm not sure quite what you mean by the by cost comparisons, but I wanted to touch on the the first link that you see and how to shop for refurbished electronics here. Um, that there is some of the, uh, there are some kind of tips on how to comparison shop uh, when when you're shopping for refurbished electronics and and some of the things to look for um whether it's the warranty duration um the cosmetics the software that's installed um those different types of things and again that value of of like being able to contact the support being able to access the return all of that stuff that goes along with it because you know truly um, saving twenty dollars is great, but if you can't if you can't return your computer that's not working properly, um, it's twenty dollars is really um, not very much money <laughs> um, for the the headache and the time that you spend um, trying to deal with all of that headache. So um, take a look at the article. I think that it might offer some some great guidance. I also want to add to that, Kelly, because I think that a lot of us in our sector, you know, uh, sometimes it's easy to forget because TechSoup has been around for so long, but we ourselves are a nonprofit. And so mm -hmm. by supporting the marketplace of a nonprofit, you are supporting the sector. So that's sometimes important to keep in mind because we may not be, you know, we try really hard to do nonprofit pricing and be competitive but we may not be able to always meet that bar. Uh, we certainly try 
but then our values are certainly aligned with the sector and, and the betterment of the right. sector. So that's right. It, yeah, it's definitely got, you know, it's it's, um, you know, competing with with um, <laughs> the likes of Amazon, for example, is, is has gotten very challenging um, through the years. And, um, you know, we we certainly do our best and, um, you know, um, as far as as far as like how to really like when you're comparison shopping, um, that like it's it sometimes can be very difficult to compare the apples to apples, right? No pun intended, but um, but truly, um, if if you want to use a phone for an example, um, a scratch on the screen can make a ten dollar difference. The color of the phone can make a thirty dollar difference. Um, the cords that come with it, or the uh, if a charging block comes with it, um, those things all make a difference. If you have to pay for shipping, that makes a difference. Um, obviously, the the things that are you know really clear and upfront. The hard drive size, the RAM in a laptop, um, the the actual make and model of the laptop, the brand of the laptop, those things are are pretty easy to compare. But when you start to really get down into the the nitty gritty, um, a lot of places will advertise, you know, Windows ten, for example. But you have to you have to dig a little deeper to see if it's a win uh, if it's a pro version or if it's a home version. And that's hundreds of dollars worth of difference right there alone in the software. And so you have to really kind of sometimes mine out that information and and figure and just kind of assess. And if you are ever unsure, you are, all, are always welcome to contact us through our customer chat and ask, you know, if, if you found something that you want us to assess against one of our products, I am happy to do that for you and, and help you analyze what your best, you know, if you're getting the best deal with us. I'm Thanks, certainly Kelly. happy to do that. Yeah. Yep. And, and just the detail in which Kelly answered that question um, alerts us to the how seriously she takes the pricing of her refurbished pieces and how much diligence that she shows on a daily basis. Um, you should see some of her spreadsheets and her analysis. It's really quite quite something. She has the sector at heart. Um, and Glenn, that, that um, leads me to your wonderful question in terms of the long-term value of, of getting hardware through TechSoup. I think that one thing, and team, please add your thoughts, but one thing that I'd like to share with you, Glenn, is that at TechSoup, we're committed to making nonprofits successful across the board. So our journey with our nonprofits um, doesn't end with, hey, you've made a purchase, have a good time. Our journey is, you know, here's a webinar to help you learn about how to best use your hardware and your software and your licenses. And, oh, okay, a whole bunch of nonprofits are struggling with some something. So, okay, we're gonna go get, and we have one of these organized later this month or early next month on um, Cisco, right? Cause it's not as accessible. So we're gonna help you to learn about the, the networking and security features that Cisco offers and create fora for you to be able to ask questions. Um, Joe recently did an event on Mobile Beacon during Library Lo Lovers Month. And that's when we're sort of really explaining, bringing libraries together to help you to learn from each other and learn which features of M Mobile Beacon are right for you. So the community that TechSoup serves and the learnings that we can bring to the sector as a whole because of the 1.4 million, right? nonprofits that we serve across 234 countries, that is what gives the long-term benefits to our sector. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you.
So Stephen Lee is um, asking how, um, or he, he's saying that when comparing in the past, um, TechSoup offers from companies like Dell for new equip against new equipment that the new equip the new equipment is typically more appealing. Um, so I I think I'm translating that as if you're looking at um, a refurbished computer versus a new computer. Um, that the new computer pricing is typically more appealing. Um, and I, I'm gonna ask Matt to jump in a little bit on this. Um, but one of the one of the things that is is very um challenging, and this comes out in new in in the article a little bit on um, the first blog article here that you see. Um when with computers, there's there's um, there's a, a wide variety. It's kind of like a car, right? You've got you've got so many different cars. They all generally do the same function. They they get you from point A to point B, but they do it in you know there's there's a lot of different classes of those cars, right? And and the way that you experience that ride from point A to point B is going to be vastly different from a um, a Ford Escort from a Bentley, right? It's going to be very, very different. Um, so so something to, to think about when, when you're just looking at um, the price of a refurbished computer against the price of a new computer that maybe you see at Costco, for example, right, um, is Again, are you are you comparing the same thing? And one of the things that's that's really um, kind of a hidden hidden thing that um, you might not see right up front is um, OEMs make a lot of OEMs, Dell in particular, Dell, HP, and Lenovo, I believe. They make um, two kinds of classes of computers, and one is business class and one is consumer class. And the business class computers are more robust. They're made to, to run more uh, continuously. And Matt, this is where I'm going to ask you to jump in to kind of like uh, describe the difference a little bit. And this is why we have you're going to see a difference in price point. And I'm going to say that the majority of the computers that um, we are selling through the refurbished program are uh, business class. Matt, can you help me out a little bit? Yeah, I think it's to, to what Kelly was saying. It's really the mm -hmm. apples to apples comparison. And so, you know, a lot of the units that we'll have in the catalog might have been the best in breed laptops three years ago sort of thing. And so while there are consumer grade, which are heavier plastics, they're made with components that are not as durable, built for the long term, the battery capacities might be lighter, things like that, compared to the, the term of art most folks use is enterprise grade which mm -hmm. is, you know, um, most of the computers, I think every machine we're selling in the TechSoup catalog would be, is a high-end enterprise grade unit. And like, not to get too far into the weeds, but if you look at the difference between a, a Dell that starts with the number three and a Dell that starts with the number seven, the sevens are built much nicer. There's more USB ports, more connectivity. Um, they kind of got a better feel, a little bit lighter. And so, you know, uh, we, we've evaluated kind of where our machines are against the current similar best in breed of that line for Dell. And it's typically on a magnitude of like two to three X less expensive for the sorts of options that you're getting with our refurbished machine. Uh, Thank you, Matt. Um, okay, so Samir is asking, um, can anyone comment on the right to repair legislation that is passed in Europe? Will we see similar legislation in the US? I miss the days when we could save money by easily replacing computer batteries and upgrade RAM or hard drives. Me too. <laughs> uh, Matt, I, I bet you, you could speak to this a little bit. 
I can. So most of what you're saying, that there's been some movement at the FCC level on right to repair um, and certain things around the ability to unlock cellular devices. That's kind of ongoing. Most of what you're seeing in the United States, though, is happening at the state level. Um, so you're starting to see a different patchwork. I think there's seven or eight states who've passed some sort of right to repair law. There's not total sort of harmonization in all the other, um, between all the other kind of different sorts of legislation. I think it was California just came out and we're still kind of reading through to understand the nuance of that and how it's different than Minnesota and Connecticut and I think it was uh, Illinois and, and some of these other states. But you're, you're really starting to see you know, two years ago, there was no right to repair legislation anywhere. And you're starting to see that move kind of amongst some of the mostly more progressive state houses. Um, but that's great because once a critical mass of population kind of is under these laws, they're going to start being able to make that. Uh, and you can see it like Apple has made some recent efforts to make certain components um basically so you could buy them from Apple direct to be able to repair devices. I think the only second point I would make though is, you know, devices continuously get smaller, thinner, lighter. And in doing that, there are some construction design choices that have to get made. So some of the inability to upgrade products is things like, the RAM used to be a little chip that you could pull pull on, put off into the machine, and now it's soldered directly onto the board. And so the degree of difficulty in, you know, taking your 16 gig and making it a 32 gig machine when it's soldered on the board is outside of the grass of 99.99% of the population. But that's a trade-off if you ask the OEMs, they would say they're that's necessary to drive the thinness and things like that, that people are continuously coming to ex expect from their electronics devices. So there are kind of two different issues uh, at play with that. So there is also, um, if you if you Google right to repair, um, I believe that there is a website where you can follow um, the, the ins and outs of what's going on. Um, it's, I believe it's right to repair.org. Um, and uh, you can, anybody that's interested, they are, um, they are not only, you know, fighting for our right to repair uh, electronic devices, but they're fighting for the right to repair things like refrigerators and appliances and cars and tractors. <laughs> <laughs> everything that we used to be able to repair ourselves, but, um, but no longer can. Um, and they're, and they, they fight planned obsolescence as well. So um, it's a great movement and um, you can, you can also get behind that, um, uh, that movement. So a um, couple more questions. Um, do we offer a bigger discount if we buy more products at once? Um, sometimes I'm going to say sometimes it depends. Um, so Chloe has put in a link in the chat for you. Um, that's, um, says re for requests not found on TechSoup, feel free to check out our special request form here. That form, um, is also good if you're, if you're making an order, if you want to order a whole bunch of stuff, um, or a whole bunch of one item, um, Typically, if you're, you know, looking to, to buy 20 or 30 or 40 or 100 of something, we're going to be able to work with you on pricing. Um, so feel free to ask um, is, is the answer. And we will see what we can do for you. Um, and then uh, Tabby Chapman is asking, speaking of a car, would we ever consider leasing the technology? Um that's a that's a great question, and um, it's something that has been talked about a little bit. And um, uh, but we haven't we haven't gotten there yet. And um, but we're going to try for sure because 
um, we we recognize that there's um, there's a need there too. So uh, keep keep an eye out. Um, and then let's see. Is there a donation receipt if hardware is donated? So if you use the uh, that last link and you donate uh, through that portal, you will get a receipt. Yes. Yeah, speaking of that portal, just to add to Kelly's um, uh, commentary, the we just last year we put together this this opportunity for our nonprofits to to again in the spirit of uh, of sustainability to be able to bring back their computers through donor to our through our partnership with Donor Connection. So please spread that word for us too, because we you know so often uh, we we will go you know visit friends and they'll have a garage full of computers. And those those computers can help those who need us most. So let's let's together. I know you're here because you care about the same things we care about. And so let's together also come back and begin to see TechSoup as a way to get your older computers back into the into the economy of of sustainability. Okay. Yeah. I just so want to we, do a little time check. We have about yep. 10 minutes left. Uh, so if there, are any burning, if there are any burning questions out there or, you know, your mind's starting to spin a little bit, like, feel free. This is the time. I see we have one more question in the chat uh, for you, Kelly. Uh, let's see. Which, where, 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 I'm, where is it? Sorry. And while you're looking for that, Shane, I love, love, love your comment. Please link in with me, with Kelly. Um, absolutely. We definitely look to uh, companies, local companies, large companies, small companies. Um, Matt does too. We look for folks that are going to, uh, that are willing to donate computers to us so that we may refurbish them and pass them along to the sector. So 100%. Please spread the word that TechSoup would be wo way, way delighted and excited to, to get these computers to those who need it. Joe, could you read the question to me? I'm sorry, I've, I've lost my, my uh, screen. I you. <laughs> sorry okay. about that. So Scrat has a question. If you would, if you want to look, wait, excuse me. If you want to know what to look for in a description of laptops about the memory being removable slash replaceable, look for dim slash sodom versus something about onboard or fixed dim. On, I think this is more common. Onboard means um, mm -hmm. that the memory is soldered and not removable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is that correct? Matt, that is Matt, correct. Yep, there you go. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> the computer <you>. expert knows. <laughs> that was a, a question for the expert. <laughs> From the expert to the expert, it sounds like Scrat. Yeah. Scrat knows his stuff. Scrat knows, <laughs> Scrat knows what's going on. All right. I think that we have one more important piece of business to take care of. Um, Chloe is going to share her screen. Yes. And we're going to do a little drawing. And I know you all have been waiting for this moment. And for anybody who doesn't know, so while this is happening, I'm just going to kind of reiterate that we are giving away um, a refurbished, Chloe, you can go ahead and, and spin the wheel. We're okay. giving away a refurbished um, MacBook Air 2020 and um, from one of our amazing refurbisher partners. And number 20 is the winner. Chloe's going to announce the name in just a second. Um, and um, that will be shipped to you. We're going to communicate with you outside of this um, and get your shipping address and information. And it does come with a warranty. And um, we do have... Um, we do have one question 
Looks like somebody popped a question. One more question. Um, Let's go ahead and wrap up the, can the, I yep. announce the winner? Always going to announce 20? the winner and I'll look for the question. Okay. The winner for number 20 is Glenn McRae. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations. All right. Um, we are, um, I, Galatin, we are, Galatin Library, we are looking for your question. Give us one moment, please, to find that. Whoever gets it first, please read it. <laughs> oh, here we go. Does TechSoup have any plans for non-TPM 2.0 PCs when October 2025 when 10-0 oh, end of life hits? Um, okay, so um, we do not, so at this point, we, um, we are not, um, we do not have the best thing, the best offer um, that we have right now is we're offering Windows 11 computers. We don't have any kind of extensions for Windows 10 um, for end of life. Um, and I know that they're going to be um, charging for extended support. Um, Microsoft being they. Um, and we do not have any Linux computers. However, um, if that's something that you want to make a special request for using the forms, we may be able to, um, you know, we have we have multiple refurbisher partners and um, and we can certainly work with them and see if anybody is um, able to, um, Put that together for you um does that i hope that answers your question sorry <laughs> um yeah, that's okay it. great um all right well thank you everybody um joe do you have any last last final any final thoughts <laughs> no i thought this was pretty spectacular thank you everybody for you know taking time out of your busy days to come and meet with us and speak about refurbished hardware and the impact, the impact that it has on on our um on our on our globe, um, we, on the world. I do want to thank um our speakers today. I would like to thank Kelly Sullivan, our program manager, who is leading the charge here. I would like to thank Chloe Minkin for all of their support with all of the programs, not just refurbished hardware. They are a beacon of light within our team, and of course Matt Young with with uh, the deep knowledge and you know bringing bringing that to the table today. We really, really appreciate it. We appreciate your partnership. And last but not least, our, our director, our fearless leader, Shasta Keating, thank you so much for presenting this, giving us this opportunity to come and speak with nonprofits and um, share what we do. So get out there, you all. Think about your needs. Think about how, how we can support you because that, that's what we're in the business to do. We're here to support other nonprofits. And thank you to Joe and... You're part of a very Absolutely. special group and we'll see you next year for Earth Day as well. We'll be in touch. Thank you, everybody.